Welcome back, brewers and beer lovers, to Flying Wombat TV, the channel all about beer, banter, and bloody good times. And before we jump straight into this tasting video where we go and put our XPA up against the original Bolter XPA, mm. really quick interlude. We're wearing some really cool, awesome Wombat merch. Yeah, we've got goodness. hoodies, we've got shirts, we've got hats and beanies that I'm not wearing at the moment, yeah, but we have them. Eventually. All this stuff is available on the website as well as our brewing calculators to help you calculate things like strike water temperatures, uh, gravity corrections for the hydrometers, um, alcohol uh, calculations, as well as our entire recipe library, weird random blogs that have popped out of my brain. You can and learn to make this on there. All the other stuff Amazing. that's on there. So the <laughs> website hosts all of the information, everything to do with Wombat. You can go check it out at theflyingwombat.com.au. So now that we've done our little plug, let's get into tasting. So, off the bat, Ready. there's a very obvious difference going yeah. on here, which I'll talk about in a second, but yeah. briefly, let's introduce the uh, the second star of the show over here, the Bolter XPA. So, mm. if you are not from Australia, you may not have heard of this one, but this is the Bolter XPA, and it's considered like the original XPA in Australia anyway. It's basically an American pale ale, but you know, a little bit of branding and stuff whacked onto it's it. It's definitely one of the most popular craft beers. Definitely one of the most scene. popular. It was a yeah. huge favorite of mine for a long time. Yeah. They're no longer independent, sadly, but they do still make some kick-ass beers. Yeah. The thing that made this so special was that it was so zesty, fruity, hoppy without yeah. being like IPA hoppy. And it was like just fresh and delicious. And super, super sessionable for something that was more than your average Very pale ale. easy to drink beer. So, this being the original XPA, we figured there was no one more suited to do an AB test against <laughs> for our beer recipe. Now that I've said that, the obvious difference here is color. Okay. There is a huge color difference. <laughs> Which one already looks more XPA like? <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. The, the other yeah. thing is, oh, well, I guess cheers and taste. Yeah. Which one do you want to cheers go first, taste. Bolter or ours? Let's go ours. Let's go ours. All right. Uh, cheers. This is my first sip. Let's the... do it. So, mm. initial tasting notes: very fresh, a lot of citrus, a little bit of passion fruit and stuff coming through. Yeah. Mostly, it's like fresh, zesty citrus. Very hop flavor. Yeah. A lot of hops. Not a huge amount of malt character. I mean, there is, I guess, a bit of that that caramel sweetness going on. Probably a little more caramel sweetness than is warranted in an XPA, which is yeah. the thing that contributed to this color. There, maybe I didn't need that much medium crystal malt. I could have mm. dialed that back a bit. Or I actually think I should have used like honey malt or um, to uh, toffee malt. I can't remember. We'll superimpose up there if I remember. But basically a much lighter version of crystal malt, which carries more toffee-like sweetness and honey-like sweetness as opposed to thick you know, chewy, taffy, caramel type sweetness, and it doesn't damage, or it doesn't darken the color as much as this one obviously has here. It's bitter. That's the other thing. It is bitter. <laughs> it is more bitter than it should be. Yeah, and I think that it is. Yeah. was a brew day mistake. Mm. So, uh, what happened on the brew day was, and I can't remember if we discussed it on the brew day video or not, link wherever it shows up yeah. to that video. I had an issue with plumbing when trying to cool down this stuff. <laughs> I was doing a double brew day as we normally do for this stuff to yeah. be more efficient with Fun our times. time. And I connected the out water into the in water of the out water of the chiller plate into the in water of the, into the out water of the, of the, of the, of the counterflow chiller, which basically meant it, the water had nowhere to go. It just exploded. It exploded. It exploded. I, just, I saw it. I saw it happening in like slow mo. Like something's going wrong. Huge brew day mistake. <laughs> Massively hot boiling water exploded all of over us, and uh, was not was not fun. And I made the mistake again when Definitely I plugged, not dangerous. plugged it. Plugged it again. Did it wrong again. 
and then did it wrong a third time until I realized what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, and the, yeah. the, the damage of all of this is that these hops that I threw into the hop steeping step sat in there for a lot longer than they should have. So it drew out a lot more bitterness than it was supposed to, as well as the hops that went in towards the end of boil. So if I could do this again, if I could do this again, A, I wouldn't make that mistake so that these hops aren't sitting in there for too long. B, I would also um, actually do a proper whirlpool. So I would bring the temperature of the wort down to 80 degrees Celsius instead of doing it from 100 with a flame out. Mm. Because what happens when you're above 80 degrees Celsius is you progressively get more and more isomerization of the alpha acids inside the hops, which is what creates that bitterness flavor you bring that temperature down just below 80 degrees, let's say around 75, you get almost no isomerization, which means you're getting full hop oil flavor and aroma without the bitterness. And I think that's what this needed more to be more XPA like. Cause at the moment it kind of tastes more like an IPA to be honest. Yeah, it is very hoppy. Eh? Let's now, try the Let's try the Volta. Volta. We've talked Jeez. enough. Well, I've talked enough. It's black and white. <laughs> They're not the same at all. <laughs> I feel like on different categories. <laughs> oh, they're so Can different. Can you even consider this an XPA? No, it's more <laughs> like an IPA. It's 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 way yeah, too IPA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This one is uh <laughs> is especially after tasting this and how much bitterness it has. Yeah. This that feels like it has no bitterness yeah. at all. <laughs> it's very and light and easy. Mm. The flavor. Look, honestly, the hop flavor is quite similar. It's just a lot of citrus. It's just tiled, dialed down. Yeah, That's it's a lot is. of citrus. There's yeah. a bit of passion fruit in there. That's that's about all. It's just kind of that that generic tropical juice kind of flavor, like a pineapple tropical juice. I, I can taste more tropical the, punch. I can taste more of the fruit flavors compared to this beer. This I is think, a bit overpowering. I think the bitterness the is bitterness. over. Yeah, the bitterness yeah. is overpowering. It's so you don't taste it anymore. And this one aside from the color difference, mm. is also half a percent lighter. So the Bolter XBA is 5%, yeah. our one came out to 5.5%. So it was a little higher on the ABV. Yeah. But yeah, next time I would definitely swap out the medium crystal malt and I would either add that, um, that uh, caramel, is it called caramel malt? The toffee one. Yeah, the, the, the more toffee-like mm. malt. I'd either add honey malt or that more toffee-like malt so that the color won't be so dark and it'll have more of that like, honey and toffee-like sweetness instead of thick, chewy caramel sweetness. Yeah. Or I might even cut out the caramel altogether and just stick with the cara foam and the ale malt. Re reduce the bitter hops or? Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. 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 That, that's the other big issue. I like, yeah. if, I just, if I did the same hop schedule, but as a whirlpool, like at below 80 degrees Celsius after the boiling was done, instead of throwing it in at flame out, it would be, where it'll be half the bitterness, if not more so. Mm. There was so much of that ice summarization came from the mistake with the plumbing. Yeah, this is and you from, when you drink it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is like, that's like a soft caress, whereas this is a slap mm. in the face. <laughs> See, the interesting thing is, if I was expecting this to be an IPA, this is what I would expect, like a West Coast IPA, yeah. that's what I would expect, but that's not what it was meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> Experiments. <laughs> mistakes were made. One mistake. <laughs> mm. Mm. I definitely want to make this one again though, yeah. and just not make the mistakes. So I will make this recipe again. I don't know if I'll do it on camera or not. I might make it off camera and then, you know, give you guys a quick update line. in a short yeah. or something like that. I'm not sure if it's worth doing a whole nother brew day on this, but I will add to those, uh, that the recipe that you can find on our website, I'll add to the recipe the the notes that I would have changed. Yeah. So if you were to brew this yourself, you could see what I would do if I had take two of this. Yeah. I think the goal of this as well, we weren't actually gonna make a replica of the XBA, Bolter XBA. The idea was to make- we'll Make an XBA, but not a rep replica of this XBA. Yeah, I mean, it was hard. It's hard on we the first- We didn't really consider about the color. <clears throat> Begin with. Well, the first yeah. attempt, it's hard because you don't yeah. know what's going to happen with a brand new recipe. You just, you have an idea. You have no idea what it's actually going to turn out like. Yeah. So I think now on a second attempt, I could actually get it way, way closer to this now that I know yeah. what my process and what my ingredients did to that. Yeah, it's interesting to find out. Yeah. Mm. No, I, I definitely want to do that one again. Uh, which one wins? <laughs> Should I even ask? <laughs> Mate, this has been like top one on Gab's in like, 
Beer Three battle. This is beer battle there. number two or number three, <laughs> yeah. depending on release <laughs> order. Loses and I've again. lost again. So <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm too. Loses the AI loses to the best like craft beer company in Australia. Oh look, maybe. honestly, <laughs> I, I'm not surprised that I lost to this one. There, yeah, this I one know. won Gabs, uh, yeah. the Great Australian Beer Spectacular. It won Gabs two years in a row, and it's still in the top ten. There's a reason yeah. for that. It's the most popular. It's good. Beer. It's, it's yeah. insanely sessionable. Yeah. It's so easy to drink. It's, it's so not boring at all. You can have it again and again and again. Doesn't get boring. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just a cracker it's, recipe. It's a good beer it. for no, I'm gonna drink anyone this one. like uh, coming into the craft beer scene mm. as well. Very sessionable. Yeah, it's an Easy. excellent entry level to yeah. the craft beer world. Yeah. There's definitely more honey in that than my one. Mm. The sweetness is more like honey yeah. or like um like even like maple syrup. It is more sweet compared to that. Yeah, there's definitely more sweetness, which is interesting because that's nice. got crystal mold, yeah. and this appears like it doesn't because it's so pale. So mm. I reckon they used um, honey malt for sure. There has to be honey malt in here. Oh wow. my God, there might've been a bit of wheat. No. Did I use wheat in mine? I don't remember. Up there if we did. <laughs> up there if we did. <laughs> if we did, we should up the wheat. Yeah. Because I think the wheat helps to smooth everything out and give, because the thing about wheat, yeah, the thing about yeah. wheat beers, right? Wheat beers are very half. sweet, half because of the yeast, but also because there's so much wheat in there, Wheat carries through this smooth, creamy mouthfeel like texture, but also on the flavor, it carries through this almost honey-like, maple syrup-like sweetness, which you don't get from barley, for example. And I think that might be contributing on that one. Yeah. Well, mm. I think we have a winner, but let's give this a rating. Um, out of mm. 10 XPAs. <laughs> Out of 10 IPAs, XPAs, out of 10 zero, XPAs, right? look, if, out of if, I, if I was drinking this as an IPA, it would get a better rating, but because mm. it was meant to be an XPA, I, yeah. can, I can only give it a six. Like, it's a good beer, don't get me wrong, but it is not the style. It's, yeah. it's just too bitter. Hit the mark. Didn't, didn't, didn't hit the really mark. Didn't really hit the mark, yeah. yeah. The it's mark. too bitter. I'd give it yeah. a six. As, a, as far as like a beer goes, if I didn't know what it was, I think it's a cracker West Coast. Yeah. But it's not meant to be West Coast. <laughs> so, six because, oop, phone's ringing. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, I'd give it a six uh, just because it missed the mark. It's not what it was meant to be. That That's pretty much it. What would you give it? A two. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of fair. Uh, it's, six, it's, it's not an yeah. XPA. Well, like, what an XPA, man. If I was judging it just a as a beer, I don't know. I might give it like a seven and a half. It's not mm. a spectacular IPA either. Seven, I reckon. As a, just as a beer. Yeah, because it doesn't have the malt body for a West Coast either. So yeah. it's stuck in this weird middle ground where it doesn't have the, the grain body to be an IPA, doesn't have the lack of bitterness to be an XPA. It's in this weird no man's land where it's kind of got the worst was, qualities of both. If it was both. less bitter, it'd be much better. It might be. Oh yeah, I think yeah. Just the flavors would come out better. Yeah, the bitterness is ruining it for sure. Yeah. No doubt about that. Yeah. All right, anyway, that's enough of our rambling. Cheers. Thank you very, very much to all of you that are watching. Um, and I guess, as always, guys, brew on. We'll catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. It's just endless. It's yeah. the, and I knew, I knew as soon as I finished the brew day what I had done, and I knew there was no way to fix it. Like, there was just no way I could fix it.